So in today's session, you're going to be learning how to make a maxi skirt. Um, what you need for the maxi skirt is your fabric, some elastic, some pins, and a scissor, as well as a good sewing machine. So I'm just using this Singer. Um, I've threaded all of my guides, spool, all of red guides, have my bobbin and bobbin case in there. So now for the maxi skirt, what we are going to want to do is we're going to want to determine the length of our skirt. So on the table I have about, I do apologize for the shakiness, on the table I do have about one and a half yards of fabric. I also notched on my fabric where right here on this notch, on that notch that indicates my hemline and then the top of the fabric I have about two to three inches for my waist and I want to be able to play around so I have about two to three inches for my waist that part that I showed you I'm going to actually clip that off and then since it's on the fold as you can see it's on the fold um, I'm just going to only have one seam and that's going to be like right here. I'm just going to stitch this up and that seam you can put on the side, you can put on the back, you can put on the front. Um, what I am going to do is, um, you do have the option of actually cutting your fold. Um, so you can have two pieces or you can just sew up the one side and I will demonstrate that. Um, but you definitely want to know what your waistband size is. Um, because you're going to be using this waistband elastic here. You're going to want to know what your waistband size is. You're going to want to know what the spread is. And by spread, you want to measure the opening of your feet or like how big the space in between your widest step is. So that's what I'm going to use from this end all the way to this end. So, so I cut my fabric, as you can see. So... I have the long part, this is going to be the top part, and then the extra fabric that I have left over, I can actually make a bandeau or a two top or some other like midriff crop top. Um, also you want to get a jersey that has like a lot of recovery. The only time you really have to worry about this step as far as like when you're walking um, is when you have a jersey that doesn't stretch too much. So my jersey is kind of like that, it doesn't have like a lot of stretch. Sorry, so it doesn't really stretch that much. So that's when you really definitely have to worry about it. Also, when you're doing stripes, definitely um, definitely try to match your stripes because it gives it like a more luxurious look. So definitely just go in there and take the time and just match it up like so. So I pinned literally at the bottom of like, as you can see, I pinned at the bottom of like every stripe. So when you go in there and you look at it, you can see that, well... You can see that it's kind of matched up right there. And that's that's very important because if you're going to put your center front, you, like, put this seam in the front. Like, you definitely want it to look good. So definitely do that. So our next step is literally to, we want to maximize the skirt as far as, like, the space. So this is going to be, like, a gathered, like, dirndl skirt. We're just going to gather and do a elasticized waistband. So the only thing I'm really going to do, this is the salvage. This is the salvage right here. So on this, like, salvage mark. I'm going to come in about eighth of an inch, and I'm just going to do a straight stitch from, like, the top all the way down. Just, like, a little simple straight stitch. And then with the salvage, I'm actually going to come in with my serger to do a nice, clean finish. So I decided to actually sew and keep my pins in. So if you are, just make sure that they are adjacent to the needle. And by um, adjacent, I mean that they need to be going horizontal versus vertical versus vertical. Um, so that way, when it sews through the feed dog, it actually jump like the needle can actually jump over the pen. Okay, kind of like this. Okay, so basically that's what we're gonna. Do. I'm gonna continue sewing. So I'm, I'm actually almost done. So once I'm almost done, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Um, this is a little bit. So I kept some of my pins, and as you can see, um, this is kind of what it looks like. And then I'm actually gonna serge it. Um, I have. Um, a serger. I think it has white thread in it. I'm going to keep it in just so you guys can see it. And also, I don't have a lot of black thread, so I'm going to, it'll be fun. Also, please note that you need to sew your garment on the wrong side of the fabric, so all your seams and excess fabric is inside. So, this is the wrong side of my fabric. As you can tell, like, you can see, like, um, this side is, like, darker 
or lighter and then this side is just a little bit more vibrant okay so you can see like the pearls I call them like the pearl like the pearl stitches and like how you can see like all of this in there this is the back of my garment and then like this would be the front of the t-shirt okay so that way you can make all the markings you want you can do whatever you want so now that I finished sewing I want to remove the pins and then I definitely want to serge it and then we're just gonna um, prepare it for the elasticized waistband so um, I don't have a serger so all of this extra seam allowance I'm actually gonna trim it down with my scissors I'm gonna trim it down to about a quarter of an inch that's usually good enough and that way we can still do what we want to do it's not it's definitely not gonna fray so you don't have to worry about that so I'm gonna trim it about a whole inch which is basically like right there so I'm gonna do that to the all of my fabric so now I've cut my fabric a half inch seam allowance sorry it's a little blurry there we go so this is not excuse me not a half inch it's a quarter inch seam allowance it's a little uneven but if you have a serger, you can serge it off. Um, this was this was a leftover. You can actually make something fun with this if you wanted to. Um, turn it into a headband, bracelets, even put it like a rosette on the shirt. You can actually sew it onto the skirt. Um, you can actually serge this if you want. If you don't have a serger, you can do a zigzag stitch, and that will be good too. So I'm gonna try the zigzag stitch and see how it looks, and then show you guys. So welcome back. So now that I finished um, the zigzag stitch, as you guys can see, um, it's just nothing but using like the zigzag stitch on your um, sewing machine. Um, that's if you don't have a serger or your serger is broken or you don't have thread. So this is basically what I did and I used this one which was the third one on my machine. Um, and then, so now we're ready to do the waistband. So with the elastic, what you want to do with the elastic, this is three quarter inch elastic. Um, what you want to do with the elastic, the first thing you want to do with the elastic is you want to basically put the elastic around your waist, um, regardless of how high or how low, um, and then take that measurement. Don't stretch it. Take that measurement, and then once you get that measurement, you're gonna measure. Excuse me, you're gonna subtract three inches from that measurement. I know it's kind of hard. Um, it's really hard for me to hold my phone and then explain it to you guys at the same time. So basically, um, what you would want to do is, you know, get your measurement. You would want to get your measurement. So say this was your measurement, like it fit flats around your waist. You would cut that measurement and then you would minus three inches, about three inches from it. So that way it can be a nice tight and snug on you. But not too snug because you want it to be able to go over your hips as well. So don't forget to compensate for your hips as well. So basically this is what you want to do. You want to take the end. You basically want to take the, the elastic and then measure from basically where your belly button is. Or you can make it lower as well. Um, and then you just want to kind of find your beginning and then put like another inch, like a little overlap and that will be it. And then this is where you will cut. So where my thumb is right here, this is where I will cut. So now from this measurement that we just took. So my waist, believe it or not, is a 27 inch. So um, I'm not going to subtract 2 inches. Um, excuse me. I'm not going to subtract um, 3 inches. I'm actually going to subtract 2 inches because I do want it to have... Um, I don't want it to be so tight around my stomach so I we can subtract two inches it's totally fine so I'm literally just gonna come from like from here to there you can use a ruler I kind of know because I just do it so much and then I'm just gonna literally chop off two inches so this is all of my um, my elastic so now I'm just gonna literally just come and chop off the two inches the two inches like I told you guys so I'm just gonna come and chop off of my there 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 okay and there it is okay so now we're definitely ready to start prepping for our elastic and then what we want to do is um, first we want to grab we want to find the top of our garment so all of this is the top of my garment and then um, 
we're going to actually create a channel in it. So that's why we also search it. So that channel is the part that we're going to actually turn over, just like so. Um, I like to leave a little space, so all of this is going to come and get top stitch. And then we're going to actually feed the elastic through this channel, and I will demonstrate that, okay? So since you actually have three-quarter inch elastic, you need a channel that's about um, seven-eighths of an inch. You can do three quarters but it'll just make it that much tighter I like to make mine a little bit bigger just so it's easy to feed it through so basically I'm actually um, doing seven eighths of an inch um, I'm gonna actually feed in my elastic I'm gonna actually feed in my elastic this is gonna be my channel right here so I'm actually gonna start sewing at this first pin and then continue to go around so you just want to continue um pinning basically whatever your size of your elastic because it's completely yours you can expose your elastic i actually like to hide mine because sometimes the elastic looks cheap so i'm just going to continue pinning all the way around until i reach this side again and then once we do that then we're going to feed in through here So I'm just continuing to pin. Um, basically, I'm doing like maybe three inches of space each in between each pin. Um, that way I can maintain good spacing. And for me, it's easier because my guideline is literally the bottom of that stripe. And then I literally just match my top stripe to the bottom of that stripe so and then that literally gives me seven eighths of an inch which is perfect for me so you know if you don't have a type of guide or you're using a solid or you're using a print I definitely recommend that you guys um, use tailless chalk don't use wax chalk because wax chalk is sometimes hard to get off fabric so use tailless chalk or the invisible marker that comes off with water or the disappearing marker that disappears after like two hours I definitely recommend that okay um, and then once we have our channel prepared we're actually just gonna come in and we're gonna just do an edge stitch from the inside okay so now that I have all of my whole waistband pins um, I am gonna leave an opening remember that opening that I was telling you guys about earlier which is this opening right here but now I'm ready to put it underneath the sewing machine so basically what I'm gonna do is um, I'm literally just gonna come and just do an edge stitch and when you're stitching you're definitely gonna want to make sure that you have um, the correct tension because if you don't have the correct tension your stitches will look good on the top part which is this part and not good look good on the bottom part which is the part the public will see so definitely make sure you have the correct tension that's imperative so like I literally um, I just finished, so remember this was open and I was telling you about, so this is exactly where we're going to feed our elastic in. So now you're going to actually be able to put it in, as you can see, since now you have this close. So now that we have our channel, um, we definitely want to remove all of these pins that we have, and any pins that you left in, definitely remove them. Um, as far as your stitch here... Or this for a seam allowance you can leave that that's totally fine if you want to surge it before you do that you definitely can for me since I know what's inside um, it's definitely not um, since I know what's inside it's definitely not um, a big deal um, definitely check your insides or outside I should say to see if you have any um, skip stitches which I see that I have a few um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna redo this. So now I finished sewing. I re sewn it because it really looked bad. So remember, this is the little opening that I was telling you about, and then you're literally just gonna come and put your elastic in there. Um, so you definitely want your front to be as clean as possible. Um, so try to have some neat stitches because um, that's gonna make the difference. Um, 
Also make sure your stitches aren't skipping because that's going to make the difference. So yeah, it's all about this little channel opening right now. So this is our channel opening. And then this is exactly what our elastic's going to go through. I actually like to use a paper clip or um, a safety pin. It makes it that much easier to go through. And I'll show you guys how to do that. So with the paper clip, what I usually like to do is I like to take my paper clip and then literally just kind of jam it in there. Um, and then once I have it in there, I just kind of kind of lock it in like this. And then now we can actually take this, like this paper clip, and actually put it into our channel hole. And then you just want to feed it through. And you just want to make sure that it's flat. Um, not the paper clip, more so your actual elastic. So basically we're coming in from this channel, we're coming in through this channel, and then we want to come out of this channel. And you definitely want to make sure this stays the same way and it doesn't, like, twist or curl in you, like, while you're in there. And that's why you want it to leave, like, a little extra space so it's easier to fit through. Because I find that if you do um, do three quarters, like, the same width channel of the actual elastic, like, it gets really tight. So we're just going to continue to feed this through. As you can see, it, it takes a little while, um, but that's why you have it. So you just keep feeding it through. And then pulling, make sure it's flat, just keep feeding it through. And literally just making sure it's flat. And you know, the bigger your paper clip or the bigger your safety pin, the better the better and faster it'll move. Um, definitely don't over pull it, um, because you can actually lose your like actually lose your elastic. So just you know, just literally take your time because you don't want to get it lost and the actual channel and then you have to go look for it because you only have um, a paper clip or safety pin on one side um, but if you want you can lock it by actually safety pinning the other end to the skirt so you know you won't lose it okay so that when now that you see that you're actually coming out and getting closer to the other channel so what you want to do is as you can see I'm almost there so basically this is what it looks like. So it looks really bunched up, which is kind of what you want it to look like because it is a gathered maxi skirt. And then I have this end exposed at this channel. And then my other end is about to be exposed as well. So I'm going to bring it out and you can see that it's coming. You can see my little paper clip coming through. And then I'm literally just going to bring it out. Okay, and then my next step is I want to keep everything flat. So now that I have this out, I want this... So, so I'm going to actually lose my paper clip, guys. I'm going to get rid of my paper clip. And now that I have both my channels flat, right? Sorry. I have both my channels. So this is one end of the skirt, and then this is the other end of the skirt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap these two by a half inch, just like so. So literally by a half inch, so it's going to be like that. And then I'm going to literally just do a box with an X in it. So now that you have your box, now that you you have your box, you're actually ready to sew the rest of your waistband. So what you want to do is you want to turn it over. Right? And bring that back inside. Right? And the way you do that is you just bring these over, just move everything over. So now you can see you're actually ready to, now your waistband or your elastic is fully inside. So now this little gap, we can actually finish sewing. Okay. So basically, now that we have it the way we need to have it, if it's flat on this side, like it's flat all over, and you know that you put it in correctly, if it's flat literally all over the waistband. So now I just want to move all the excess or all the actually gathered, because I need this piece to be as straight as possible when we sew it. So that's why we left about a two to three inch opening 
um, so it's just easier for us to sew. So I'm going to sew that right now, and the last thing we have to sew is our hem. And with the hem, we're just going to do a baby hem. So you definitely want to start where you had your stitches before. Right, like right there. So if that's where your channel ended before, you want to start there. And then you're definitely going to want to come and come and back tack in these stitches down here. So it looks like one continuous, like straight. Just so it looks like one continuous um, straight line versus because you, you're literally just going and closing this hole. So now we just finished sewing the bands. Um, and so now the whole skirt's done, which is good. It's like, yay. So the only thing left to do is um, the waistband. And the waistband, I'm um, excuse me, this is, the, this is the waistband. So the only thing left to do is the hem. So it's completely up to you. Um, this is the hem down here. Um, it's completely up to you. You can do, um, you can leave your hem raw, or you can actually do a baby hem. I want to do a baby hem, but I'm not really sure, because I actually do like the way this looks raw. But if you wanted to do a baby hem, the way you would do it is use a fold, fold. So for the baby hem, you would go all the way to the bottom. So this is the bottom. This is my center line, the one seam that we had. So I'm literally, I feel like this stripe is about a half an inch, as you can see. So I'm literally going to fold it to the top of the stripe. And if you had, you can always use a ruler to measure. You can do two lines, what quarter inch, quarter inch. If you feel a quarter inch is too small, so this is a quarter inch. If you feel like a quarter inch is too small, you could always do a half inch. And then this is a half inch. And then you could do another half inch if you feel it's too small. It's completely up to you. You can do... The baby hem whatever size you want i like my baby hem much smaller but if this does give me a difficult time i will um do a bigger one so i'm going to try it out a quarter of an inch so i do one fold that's my first fold and then i do another fold so that fold was a quarter inch and i do another quarter inch fold just like so so it looks like that and then i would pin okay So I decided to do an inch and a half because I feel like I have more control. Um, so this is an inch, so I have a full, excuse me, I decided to do um, one inch. So this is half inch. So basically what I'm doing is I'm folding a half inch, this is a half inch, and then I'm folding again, and then I'm pinning. Just because I feel like I have more control, the other one was just so small and I really couldn't have that much control. But don't forget when you decide your baby hem length, um, try it on and then see where you want it to hit and that's the length that you'll use and then just add like an inch to an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half and that can be your measurement for your hem. So since we're doing um, a top stitch you definitely want to start on the right side um, of the baby hem um, which is the inside right here. So basically you're on the wrong side of the fabric but this is like the right side of the baby hem so you'll see that um, and I'm going to the edge. I also move my, I position my needle more to the top of the fabric. So basically you do that. Um, if you do have a needle positioner, you definitely want it more to the, the right. So I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to continue to do this all around. So now that our hem is done, which you can see, um, this is our inside. And then this would be our outside. So now that our hem is done, we can actually literally try on our skirt and see if we like it. So let's do that. So this is the skirt close up. So this is all of the work that was done. This is us putting the waistband in. And then this is a long shot. Then the hem. So we did a lot of work today. Believe it or not, the skirt took under three hours. It's like two hours and 30 minutes um i am gonna put it on for you guys i just have to find someone to take a picture so bear with me